Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have a huge issue in the United States. We are absolutely terrible at men's soccer. We can't seem to figure it out. Soccer is the most popular sport in the world, and we continue to be horrible and lose. Two, week, or two months ago, the men's national team lost a World Cup qualifying game to Trinidad and Tobago. And because we lost this game, it was our last chance to qualify for the 2018 World Cup. So if you didn't catch on, we will not be in the World Cup next summer. That means no parties, no fun watch celebrations, <laughs> no patriotism, all because our soccer team couldn't beat a ragtag group of guys from a small Caribbean island where there's only approximately 1.3 million people on this island. I mean, we have more 10 and 12 year olds playing soccer than they have on the entire island. What is going on here? <laughs> so I've been studying this my entire life. I've been watching and playing soccer and I finally found a few very simple reasons <clears throat> that we're not doing as well as we should be. And they may seem very simple and maybe obvious, but I'm telling you, these are what are holding the United States soccer back. So number one, we are obsessed with winning. Yes, that's true. We are obsessed with winning. And what we need to stop doing is we need to stop winning at all age levels. From a very young age, we try to win when kids are 10, when kids are in high school, when kids are in college. And our formula for winning, it works. But it keeps us from winning when we're professionals. And here's what our formula is, bigger, stronger, faster. And it works in football, and it works in basketball, and it works in baseball. And it works when the kid's 10 in soccer, and it works when they're in high school. But when you get to the professional level at the top against the international stars, being bigger, stronger, and faster does not work. We're doing it completely backwards. The best soccer player in the world, his name is Lionel Messi. He's from Argentina. And if you look, if you go to ESPN and you look at his, his kind of player profile, he's five foot six, he's 148 pounds. He is a shrimp. <laughs> He's absolutely tiny. And if you would have seen him when he was in grade school, he wouldn't have made his grade. Oh, I mean, in the United States, he maybe wouldn't have been on the best team in grade school. And I know he wouldn't have made high school varsity because of his size wouldn't be the win winning formula here in the United States. So what I'm saying is us trying to win at young ages is keeping the best players from becoming on our national team. Number two. We need to work on our actual skills and our foot skills. A wise Italian soccer coach once taught me. He said, you need to kill the ball. And what that means is, when the ball is played to you in soccer, you are a coach at a young age in European countries to stop the ball dead and kill it on the ground. It is motionless. It is not leaving your foot, and no one's taking it. That is the prime focus of, of soccer in Europe. In the United States, we call that a trap. And it's something that you do. You trap the ball, and you keep playing. But we're not really focusing on this like we focus on our free throws, like we focus on our wide receiver routes, like we focus on catching the ball in football. We don't focus on this very important aspect because it doesn't really make us win when we're young, but it catches up with us when we're older. We need to kill the ball. And number three, we have to change a vital rule in soccer that we do at the youth level, and it's substitutions. This blew my mind when I kind of put it together that this is a huge reason why we are terrible at soccer. It's our substitution rule. In football, you get unlimited substitutions in college, you get unlimited substitutions in the pros. In basketball, unlimited substitutions, unlimited substitutions. In college, in college soccer, you can sub up to 11 players at a time, and you can sub as many as you want with some certain limiting rules. But when it comes to professional soccer that the rest of the world plays, you get three substitutions. Three. That means only three players come on and three players come off. And that seems like a really small, simple rule, but it makes a world of difference, OK? So our strategy is to have big, ogre, strong, big, fast players 
who have poor foot skills get onto the field and run as hard as they can for 20, 30 minutes and try to overpower the other team. And it works. I'm telling you, it works. And my, my college alma mater, I didn't play on the team, but I watched the school, Rockers University. They could win every single year and get to the quarterfinals of the championship, but they would lose in the quarterfinals because they weren't skilled enough and they focused on being big and strong. And we would they would sub 11 players at a time, 11 players off. It was completely different. So it's a horrible strategy to try to go to the professional world where you have three substitutes and think that the players that their whole lives have been the biggest, strongest, and the fastest who can sub in and off of the field are going to be able to compete with five foot six little guys who are running around like crazy and can play a whole 90 minute soccer. It'll never happen. And so those are just three very basic things that I think we need to start thinking about differently. It isn't revolutionary. I don't think we need to put more money into our soccer program. I don't think the MLS needs to become a culturally accepted thing that is the reason that's holding us back is that kids aren't watching soccer. I think we put our mind into the right place and focus on some very <coughs> simple tactics and changes to change a couple rules. We're going to be the best country in the world at soccer, just like we are in every other sport. So keep that in mind. Thank you very much.